Hey, what's up, guys? Sean here with Blue Ridge Silverhound, and we are back with a pocket change market report. Haven't done one of these in about a week. Uh, we did do a graded edition, so we did get to see some of the uh, the coolest graded coins in the era variety grouping. Uh, but this time around, we have the good old ungraded type of uh coins here to have sold in about the last 48 hours uh so these are all coins errors of varieties specifically uh that have been discovered by uh folks like you and me uh simply by coin roll hunting going through large cash of just change uh along with um uh cherry picking local coin shops or shows that's also another great way of finding some of these coins on the cheap and then thereby adding it to your collection or simply reselling it um, and making a pretty gosh darn good living from it. Now we are coming up here closing out the summer. Uh, I would say, you know, this is going to be a pivotal time in which folks are going to decide to pick up the hobby again and uh you know they're gonna wait for the kiddos to go back to school things like that there's a few kind of um noteworthy times of the year where things uh begin to shift and that time is right about now uh we are going to see um not only an influx of uh, folks that have been doing this but decide to take the summer off to come back into numismatics um, but also we have a brand new American women's series quarter coming out here in about 10 days. All right. Another huge drop. And from what we've seen from the first three releases of the American women quarter series, there have been a number of really nice errors from die clashes to a few of these routine cuts on the, uh, the Wilma man thriller quarter. That's why I'm calling it now. Um, there's just been more of these being found. People are capitalizing on the U S mints, uh, just bad quality control. And, uh, they, it's in full display these days. So we're going to take a look at a number of those coins here today, along with all the other coins that people are finding and subsequently reselling for a pretty nice profit. Uh, so I want to thank you guys for tuning in again, no graded coins here. Uh, I've reserved that for a completely separate video that I think I'll do about twice a month. Uh, it's just been a popular upload recently, ever since I started it about a month and a half, two months ago. Uh, so we'll continue on that trend. All right. So let's see what we got here. Thank you guys again for all your views and support. And uh, let's go ahead and welcome uh, one of my favorite reports and videos on the Blue Ridge Silverhound channel. All right, so we have a coin here that a lot of you, I'm sure, have found. Uh, at first glance, it just really looks like a pretty well circulated 1947S Lincoln Wheat Scent, but some of you have probably found a few of these coins that has what we call the Ghost Lincoln. Uh, you can see it on the reverse there. Uh, this uh, ghostly kind of uh, appearance uh, showing what is a reverse version of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, on the reverse. Uh, now this right here is what is uh, commonly referred to uh, in the error community as a progressive indirect uh, die transfer. Uh, that Yeah, that's a lot of jargon thrown at you. Um, but it is a type of uh, die deterioration. Uh, just, just to let you guys know, that's what that looks like. It's most commonly seen on um, earlier Lincoln wheat scents uh, from the 40s and 50s. Very rarely do you see it on much later dated, say, Lincoln Memorials. Uh, but yeah, this is what we see here. Now, the coins generally don't have a lot of value. However, after this particular sale, you know, I might be changing my tune a little bit. You know, people will buy whatever their little hearts desire. In this particular case, this coin did sell for $25, right? I mean, pretty strange. I own actually quite a few of these. If I could get $25 per coin, I mean, that would be a glorious day. No doubt about it. Uh, but that, yeah, that is the strange kind of error we're seeing here. Another thing to note while we're on the subject, just look at the overall die deterioration of the strike on the reverse. Um, again, they kind of go hand in hand. 
anytime you see the, uh, the the PIDT is what I like to call it for uh, for short, uh, normally you'll find other weak elements of the strike on that particular side. So $25 is a huge sale in retrospect. And uh, the, the more interest that there are in these coins, and I would venture to say that Maybe there might be some future kind of like date collecting of this particular anomaly. We'll see. Uh, that might already exist, and uh, this might be one of the more tougher dates. So there you go. That's what we have here for this one. The next one that we have here is a uh, much later dated 1993 Lincoln Memorial Cent. Uh, this puppy is broad struck. Uh, that's the type of error we're looking at here. Uh, you'll notice that there's a lot of exposed zinc as well. Uh, which is quite normal on an off-center and broad strike error of these copper-coated zincans. Uh, the copper layer is so thin on there, so it doesn't take much to actually stretch and tear that particular layer. But for those of you that aren't aware, broad strikes occur when the collar that holds the coin in during the striking uh, process is not engaged. All right. So with that being said, the coin, uh, the metal flow goes outwards even more beyond the, uh, the area in which the collar would hold the coin in. And then we end up with a coin that's probably the size of a standard Jefferson nickel, sometimes a little bit larger. Uh, this particular coin right here is a much tougher date. These are collected by date, as you guys know. This one sold for $39.99. Right here, I mean, we just have an overall extremely beautiful, very clean nickel. It's a 1952S Jefferson. Uh, I mean, aside from the fact that it's a really nice, what I consider to be album filler, uh, as you can see, it's got that weak strike on the reverse, uh, which is kind of the norm for these 1950s nickels. Uh, they were just not very well struck at all. Although this one, I will give some extra credit because it does exhibit quite a bit of luster which is not generally seen from this date however uh this one does have a little bit of a die crack that goes from the rim into <coughs> excuse me the top right corner of monticello and um you know it's it's quite minor um you know a few years ago we wouldn't give this a second look but um, you know, nothing is normal these days. Uh, people are buying, again, uh, these inexpensive kind of fringy type of uh, errors. This one did sell for $13.90, which I think is more than beyond fair for this type of error. But this is the type of thing that you could find across many dates of coins all the way up into the current date of what's out there today. Now, this is an error that you just don't see that often on a, a very short series. This is a 1999 uh, Philadelphia minted Susan B. Anthony dollar coin. This one is uh, much like the Lincoln scent we saw a few slides back. Um, it's a byproduct of a broad strike. All right, so it's an uncentered broad strike. You have a much thicker rim area at the bottom of the obverse there. Uh, this coin... Because of its rarity and its denomination, uh, these are um, widely hunted for out in the marketplace. Um, and the fact that this one is ungraded speaks uh, to just the popularity of this error. Uh, this one ended up selling for $128.80. So that's a really good chunk of change. And again, showing that... Um, Higher denomination errors of more modern uh, dates are uh, quite scarce, and when they do come up, uh, there's going to be some uh, quite a bit of interest for them. So uh, the next listing we have here is actually a pair of Jefferson Nichols. I mean, just decent dates, nothing really to uh, write home to mother about. Uh, they all exhibit um, a curved clip, uh, quite minor actually. This one right here, there's a K9 clip there. Uh, so that's a nine o'clock position if you're looking at the obverse of the coin. And then we also have this 1978 as well uh, with a little bit larger clip. So this was sold as a pair for $13.49. So if you didn't want to hassle with selling these individually, although, you know, you probably could make a few extra dollars more um, by selling them individually. Uh, you know, you could certainly sell it in little mini lots and do okay uh, that way. 
Now this one's quite neat. This was actually sold by Sullivan Numismatics, uh, one of the foremost um, uh, error experts in the field of numismatic errors. Um, this is a 1981S Prusat. And, um, you know, aside from the, the mint mark varieties, uh, there's one really, really nice error. And again, uh, errors on proof coins are quite desirable, and they're just normally not seen all that often. Uh, this one has a mightily die clashed Roosevelt dime on there. Take a look at the obverse of that coin. You got clashing not only in the field area of the coin, but take a look at the clashing on Roosevelt's profile, you know, which is in relief on the coin. And then you can also see some of that, um, that strong clashing on the reverse as well. Uh, just an outline of Roosevelt's uh, uh, profile or bust right there on the reverse um, beautiful beautiful coin right here and it's the the big value driver of the sale of this set at four hundred and forty dollars is what this one ended up selling for um, some would say crack it out and grade that thing but if you do that you're still gonna end up with a coin that's probably worth between four and five hundred dollars and you know i've said it time and time again Sometimes you just don't need to grade the coin, okay? Grading a, an error attribution through PCGS is like $65. So if you could save that kind of money and just sell it raw as it is in the original government set, um, that is so much better. Uh, more money in your pocket and a quick sale. Now, this dollar bill here is brand spanking new, 2017 A-Series. Uh, what sold this one is the serial number. Uh, this one has a six-of-a-kind, nines. Um, while kind of like, you know, borderline just okay on the fancy serial number front, um, the finder of this note just just threw it up online and ended up um, uh, selling it through uh, just a regular auction format to the tune of $42.78. I mean, hello, that's pretty good. Um, generally outpacing a lot of other fancy serial number types. Um, and that's with 10 bids, by the way. So there was quite a bit of activity on this note. Uh, pretty good sale. And here's a coin that uh, I believe I have not even brought up because they just don't come up to the marketplace that often. This is a rarity among modern varieties like you have never seen. This is a 2009D Washington, D.C. Uh, territory quarter. Uh, some would say it's a state quarter. Uh, but this is a very well-known double to die. This is a double die reverse. It's FS801. And this has the crazy doubling of ELL in Ellington. That's rotated by a fair deal. I mean, this thing is nuts. Plus, you also have a little bit of doubling on the piano keys as well so for a coin that comes up on the auction circuit maybe once a year if you're lucky this one sold for what i thought was a very fair amount of money but for a lot of you based off of the overall circulation of the coin uh condition wise this is going to blow you away this one sold for 520 dollars with three bits um this is a coin that's been on my hit list for quite some time uh I just don't have it in me to spend the kind of money just to own it. This is one coin that I prefer to find myself. Although, I'm just having a heck of a time uh, because of how scarce it is. I'm sure this was found very early on from the U.S. Mint. Really neat, very visually appealing error here. This is a double struck 1983 P. Jefferson Nickel. So the secondary strike is approximately... 70 to 75 percent off center uh featuring two dates on there that's pretty nice and uh this one here sold for a hundred dollar bill not too bad i like this one and uh i probably have maybe a roll's worth of this particular coin but it's a 1957d uh lincoln wheat scent um as you can tell again pretty well circulated uh probably not worth any more than probably a nickel as far as the uh the the copper you know kind of value to it um but this is actually a very nice example of a strong machine doubling um it's neither an error or variety uh, it's kind of up in the air as to what they call this uh, they call it 
probably more so damage, um, uh, do, you know, during the minting process than anything else. Uh, but I have quite a few of these, and um, I was quite shocked at the sold value of this one. It ended up selling for $25.75 with 7 bits, you know, kind of like the 69S with the same machine doubling that you see out there in the marketplace. Those sell for like $10, $20, $30. Um, they're quite relevant in the market, uh, and people just want an example. This is a very strong one. Here's another 5070, although a much nicer type. Uh, this is a uh, coin that exhibits a BIE die chip. Uh, very nice. Uh, again, these are collected by progression, and these are all uh, generally listed on a website called CudsOnCoins.com. Uh, this one right here sold for $7.90. Uh, overall, just quite a bit of interest from these coins, and uh, they will continue to hold on to pretty good values here in the long run. Now, of course, you know, these will come up on occasion on the good old PCMR, but we got a uh, another classic example of one of the many double-to-die reverse double-thumb coins that can only be found on the 2009 Philadelphia Minted Formative Years Lincolns. Um, this one right here, you can see that extra thumb, uh, just a little bit south of the main thumb, I guess. Uh, but there's a bunch of different types of the doubled thumb. This is a good one right here. Uh, this is FS807 in the Cherry Picker's Guide. It's also WDDR number 16 um, in the Wexler files. This one sold for $13.90. That's a pretty good sale. Now here's just a really nice prime example of a 2007P Rosie. Uh, this one is an uncentered broad strike. Uh, very nice looking coin here. This one sold for $21.95, and people are finding these in coin rolls. There was actually a, a gentleman uh, a few weeks ago that ended up finding like six of these in a box of different dates. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're not too far off as far as original size of a Roosevelt dime, uh, but they are quite noticeable. And, of course, statehood quarter errors are always being looked at. Um, you know, and even coins that are as circulated as this Georgia. This peach here is a 1999 P. Uh, again, you could say it's probably off center by about 10%. Uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, but this one sold for $15, which I would take that all day long, um, because of its circulation status as far as grading is concerned. Now, this one's pretty neat. Uh, this is a 2019 W. American Memorial Park, a very nice uh, West Point, very, very limited quarter. Uh, these were all the rage a couple years ago uh, as the U.S. Mint announced that they were going to release circulation rarity coins for every everyone to treasure hunt. And uh, yeah, here's a prime example of that. It's actually the more valuable of the five 2019 West Points. However, this one is on the list for a different reason. This one has a couple little strikethroughs. You can see the little tail uh, there of the E in United. Uh, that is actually a strikethrough. Uh, maybe a little bit of grease, some debris in there. Uh, but there is also a little, little bit of a strikethrough right on Washington's nose, if you can see that. Um, this coin, wow, sold for $70. A lot of money for this one here. Uh, traditionally, a non-error American Memorial Park is right around 25 30 bucks. Uh, again, the most valuable of the five for this year. Um, there are tons of errors to find on all the West Point uh, dates of 2019 and 20. So make sure you're looking out for these little things. Um, they are going to enhance the overall value of the coins quite a bit. Now here's just a really nice circulated $19.95 bill. I mean, it just looks like a dollar bill. Uh, the serial number is normal, nothing crazy or strange. Uh, the third print is slightly misaligned, but that's not the real reason why that this is on here. If we flip to the reverse, we have actually a partial front-to-back wet ink transfer. All right, so you can see that. Uh, that extra overlay of black, uh, it's all mirrored and in reverse. That's what you want to look for on this error. 
It's one of the more common ones to find out there. Uh, this one ended up selling for actually a decent amount at $113.94. Another error that uh, took the world by storm last year in 2021 is the Tuskegee Airmen uh, quarters uh, with the strike through on the reverse. Perfectly placed right on the uh, the building there that gives it the look of explosion, fire, you know, all sorts of stuff going on. Uh, these can only be found on the Philadelphia Minted Coins. Uh, so this one right here, the pictures were not too good. They were quite small on the original listing. I blew them up the best I can so you could see it. Uh, ended up selling for $35.00. So prices have fallen. If you're looking to pick up some of these uh, for a lot cheaper price, now might be the time, uh, especially when there are still nice mid-state examples to be found out there. Now here's just a really nice example of one of my favorite varieties, 1995 Lincoln Memorial Scent. This is the DDO FS101, so it's a double to die. Unlike any other, so you got pretty strong doubling on the motto, In God We Trust. Also on the word liberty, uh, very, very, very prominent. These are still being found in change today. Um, and they are just a consistently solid seller in just about all grades. But the nicer the grades, the more that the price jumps. This one sold for $74.65. Really nice, clean, mid-state example. And another good one to look out for on a very, very nice date. 1972 doubled die obverse. This is the FS102 or number two. Um, but this one is a beauty showing just amazing doubling uh, across many of the obverse uh, uh, areas. Uh, the devices that you see here, the date, liberty, and the motto in God we trust have some of the most strongest doubling that you will find on any date of Lincoln scent. Uh, still being found out there, specifically in rolls, BU rolls. This one sold for $153.90. Uh, the prices will continue to jump on these, especially um, FS101 going all the way up to about number seven or eight, um, especially in really nice condition. That's what most collectors are looking for. Now, a coin could be an absolute beater and still has something worthy to look for. This is a 1943 steel scent. As you can see, there's lots of oxidation, a lot of wear to this coin. Uh, but it has what we, what we call a retained cut. So it's a crack that begins at one point of the, um, uh, the rim and then goes into the, the design and then exits at, at some point again on the rim. Uh, and you can trail the actual crack through the devices. So you got to be able to see that. But this is going to be eventually a full-blown cut as a piece of die falls off. This one coin right here sold for 10 bucks, And given its condition, man, that is a good amount of money. So make sure you're looking for these. They are uh, actually quite common on the 43s. Well, we were bound to get there, so we have two of these that we're going to talk about here on the PCMR today. The first one is going to be the single obverse uh, retained cut. Man, this thing is massive if you haven't seen it before, but it's on the brand new Wilma Man Thriller quarters. can only be found on Philadelphia minted coins, so make sure you're looking out for that P mint mark. Um, this one right here is a very nice kind of earlier state version. I hear there is five different progressions of this particular error. Uh, this is one of the earlier ones. Yeah, so the prices, they're on the move, as I expect them to be. This one sold for $420 with two combined bids getting there. So it was a one and done kind of uh, deal. And uh, whoever bought it got a really nice example. Now, if you guys are hunting through good old wheat scent lots, uh, make sure you're looking out for the myriad of different uh, RPMs and double dies. There's a lot of them. Here's another one here for you. This is a 1949 D over D repunch mint mark. You can see the secondary D is northeast of the primary. All right, this is a really strong one. Uh, this coin sold for $25. Uh, so it's one date that you 
that you see on occasion and they always command a little bit more than the than the rest so here's like one of the more bigger lots this week uh, we have a lot of four statehood quarters and they're all broad struck all right so these this is a nice i would consider to say maybe starter collection of uh errors uh, that someone can uh, use to put to start like a statehood quarter error set uh people do collect these by state by date by mint mark the whole nine yards uh we have new hampshire maryland south carolina and virginia uh the virginia i've seen quite a bit with a broad strike the other three uh come and go uh on the market um on occasion uh coins are in really nice shape and uh this three coin lot i feel like is a pretty good steal at 31 dollars and 50 cents with seven bids I think if you're going to buy this to flip, I think you're probably going to double your money. Um, I would say turn these around, put them up back on eBay at $19.99, shipped, and then you're good to go. Um, so <clears throat> just a, a really good example of coins that you need to be on the lookout for uh, in bulk that will make you just loads of money all right you could do this um, people have been doing this for a while to supplement their uh their regular income and uh you know considering that we're going to be heading into the holidays here very shortly this is going to be very important here's a 1958d lincoln wheat scent just a really nice high grade minty red uh with a pretty good sized curve clip this one sold for $59.44 with 11 bids. Um, yeah, I mean, what else is there to say? This is like one of the most expensive clips I've seen in quite some time. And it was bid up through 11 bids on this. So, yeah, a lot of interest. Uh, again, if this is one for a date set, this might be pretty scarce. Now here's an oldie, uh, 1934 $5 Fed Reserve note uh, with a gutter fold. Uh, you can see there on the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, so the sheet had a little bit of a wrinkle that was printed over, and this is kind of like the end result. Um, so on the back, uh, you don't have a gutter um, or an omission of printed area, which means that at some point the sheet was stretched uh, before the back print was applied. This one right here sold for $95. Uh, again, one of the more readily available error types of um, earlier dated notes. Quick little update on some wide AM uh, coinage. We have a 1998, and uh, it's in decent shape. Uh, you know, so if you're looking for an example of this coin uh, to add to your collection, this is a good one here. Or if you're looking to sell and your coin is about this same condition, uh, this is good information to know. This one sold for $14.35 with three bids. Uh, this one has that really strong gap between the A&M and America. All right, so uh, the regular ones will have the A&M touching at the, at, at the base. Now, not a pretty one, but it's a 1965 Washington Quarter, uh, this time with a pretty sizable curved clip on there. Uh, this one sold for 20 bucks. So, uh, yeah, always look out for the earlier uh, dates, it, even pretty well circulated. They will still have a market. I would trade this for a $20 bill all day long, uh, even as a really nice uh, Blakesley effect right here by the date. Uh, and that's something to look out for. Another common error, this time on 1960D Lincoln Memorial, uh, what we have here is a um, detached lamination right on the obverse there. So it's right in front of Lincoln's face. Um, a, a layer of the actual uh, planchet or coin had peeled off at some point uh, and then retoned. This one sold for $12.74. Uh, again, market's so good on these as they're being collected by date. Uh, so some of the more scarce dates will command more money. Uh, this one I thought maybe was uh, almost a bisecting die crack on the reverse of this pretty well-loved 1948D Lincoln. Uh, but it could also be just a lamination, uh, a defective planchet. You know, it's, it's a lot of things this one could be. Uh, but it's quite strong. I've never personally found one of these, but I'm glad I saw this one sold. Uh, this one sold for $17.45 with six total bids. 
And another well-circulated coin here, this time a 1925D Lincoln uh, wheat set. Uh, this time we have a reverse cud die break right there on that right wheat stock. Um, the coin is not pretty, but I think that really doesn't matter. Uh, oh, by the way, this is sold by Fox Coins on eBay as well. Uh, I've taken a look at their listings, and they have quite a bit of nice stuff, actually. Uh, so this one right here sold for $23.78. That's with nine total bids, folks. Uh, pretty good one. You can find these cut die breaks across many, uh, many dates. Uh, so 25D, just with yet another one. And uh, coins and cards, we haven't talked about any, like, huge listings, but, you know, that's going to change here. Uh, 1804, Draped Bust, Half Cent. Uh, this one is the Spiked Chin variety, so you can see that spike coming out of Lady Liberty's chin there. It's also the Crosslet 4, uh, which pairs together with that Spiked Chin. Uh, but this is just a really good-looking coin for not being in a graded slab. Uh, some would say that early coppers, they don't need to be slabbed to be enjoyed. Uh, a lot of people, uh, especially the early copper folks, um, prefer to collect these ungraded. All right, uh, and they collect them by rarity, by die pairings, things like that. Um, and I see why. It's just really, really nice looking coin. Uh, I actually own one of these myself. Uh, this particular coin sold for $659.99 with 24 bids. If I were going to throw kind of like a grade out there, um, VF35, maybe XF40, uh, the detail in the hair is just really strong on this example, and um, it's it's crisp. I love this example, and uh, you know they are available out there across many grades. Well, we're gonna finish off with two very spicy coins. Well, three if you're counting the Drape Bus half set. All right, so we saw an example of the Wilma Man Thriller Quarter with just the obverse retained cut. Now this time we have finally a, an example with decent photos. I mean, nobody can take good photos of this quarter. And I just can't believe it up until now. This one has the prominent die crack on the reverse. You can see it go through the star and halfway into the coin with all sorts of weakness going on. Finally, we see one of these in its totality. Uh, this coin right here, uh, we're, we're getting close to... Uh, what I feel like was the price target of where this particular coin is worth, and that was a thousand bucks. This one right here sold for eight hundred twenty-four dollars and ninety-nine cents. Guys, for you in the southeast region of the U.S., including Texas, I believe the sale was in Texas. And if you guys are looking to make some money, look for this quarter, please. If I can't do it, you guys certainly can. Um, they're being found all over the place from Florida to, te to Texas. Um, and I wouldn't discount any other location on the East Coast as well. If you're in, say, Virginia or in Massachusetts or Ohio even, man, look for these things. This is a nutso coin um, that, you know, once we get into the, the, the fall months, the holiday months, I think we're really going to see the true potential of this coin. Uh, I don't think there's nearly as many of them available out there. Uh, I think it was discovered relatively soon, um, you, you know, by mint employees uh, or relatively early, that is. So I see a lot of potential with this coin. Will we see our first $1,000 coin here shortly? I think we might. But don't take my word for it. I've said that for like the last like month or so. Um, and there are folks trying to move these for a lot more than what I'm proclaiming. Uh, but realistically, you know, this, this coin is as special, if not better than the, um, Lincoln set from last year, uh, which ended up, I think, cresting at like eight, 900 bucks before it came kind of like leveling down to three, 400. So yeah, we'll see. This is a really great step forward, uh, for this coin. And I'm excited to see the next one sell sometime in the future. But we are going to end it off on a really nice, uh, tough, tough date. 1914S Buffalo Nickel struck on a defective planchet. You can see that uh, that ragged fissure 
uh, clip looking thing there going through the coin, um, uh, cratering all about. I mean, this thing is pretty nuts. Uh, and the coin is in really nice shape. Overall, the grade, I would say, is like an XF45, maybe AU50. Uh, it's very close. You can even see pockets of mint luster all across the coin. Uh, this one, a best offer, was accepted for $252.95. So, yeah, pretty good way to end it off here this week on the Pocket Change Market Report. I will, I am your host, Sean, with this uh, on this channel that uh, talks about these uh, coins, and I hope you guys had a good time. Maybe you got a little inspiration to go out there and uh, actually, um, you know, arm wrestle a bank teller into getting some of these quarters some of these rolls of coin and uh doing some weekend coin hunting you know it's fun you guys know you like doing it as much as i like doing it um but that's it for this one your midi midweek edition of the pcmr is a wrap don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you for all your views views and support yet again you guys have been fantastic good luck in your hunts out there hopefully you guys find a piece of treasure to call your own and uh, that's going to go ahead and wrap it up. You guys take care. Have a good one. I'll see you later.